ready. You oh. ready? Okay. So today, guys, we're gonna do uh, biscuits. So as you see, I have all my mise en place out, and my mise en place means what? Somebody answer my question, please. All materials together. All materials. So in other words, my tools, which would be spoons, measuring liquid measuring cup, level uh, spatula, flat spatula, um, a cup. And then I got my ingredients, I have my mixing bowl. So, you know, it's always important when we start a recipe that we look at the recipe and say, okay, I need flour. We bring the flour. How much flour do I need? A cup. I got a cup. What am I gonna use the cup for? The flour, what do I have to do when I measure the flour? I have to level it. Now you guys are just hanging back. All right, so uh, that's set. Then I have two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. I have my baking powder. I have my teaspoon, all right, and I have a half teaspoon. So I want to have all that ready. So I have baking soda, okay, I have it out. I have my half teaspoon that I'm using for this anyway, so I'm going to use it for this. What's the difference between baking powder and baking soda? Baking powder and baking soda, one's got, it's higher in acidity, in other words, it has more acidity in it. Um, but these are both leavening agents, so they both help, a leavening agent helps it rise. In other words, that's how you get a quick bread, is you're using these and they um, are the, you know, they help the, um, the batter rise or the dough rise. Whereas a yeast bread, a yeast bread, when we do that, we haven't used yeast yet, but you'll see that the yeast bread, we add warm water, it has to activate, and then that um, that's, uh, works that way. The yeast has to be activated by warm water, and then it actually dissolves, and that is, what activates the bread to rise up. Looking at that baking powder reminds me of one Kadar products, the baking um, baking powder instead of baking soda. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday. yeah this is really um, good for, before. like the baking soda is a lot of good uses of this. You can use this for all kinds of stuff, cleaning. Like you actually can put uh, this with water and you can clean with it. You know, you can actually brush your teeth with this, with uh, baking yes, they make soda and, and a little water. There's actually be toothpaste with it in there, okay. but you can use this as toothpaste if you, you know, put a little bit of water in it and you brush your teeth. You can use it as an air freshener and refrigerator. I don't know if you have any parents have, just open a box and leave it in. It does that. So nope. baking soda is like a very good thing. Even my pool, I throw this in my pool. I got a big bag I have at home and it helps clear, you know, clear the pool up. So nice that's too. basically an edible toothpaste right it's there. Everything, it's baking soda, it's like a very, and look at, we said, what happened we say about fires? Can we, we can use this on the fires even, right? Just throw it on there. Yes. Can baking powder be used for the same thing too? Uh, I don't, not sure truthfully about baking uh, soda, use, baking powder used for all that. Um, for some reason, I haven't heard of baking powder being used for all that. I know baking soda, definitely. But this is more acidity in here, all right? So that's a little bit the difference between these. Like I said, that's basically an edible toothpaste right there. Yeah, kind of. All right, so let's get back to our recipe. So the first thing, guys, is we're going to have all the dry ingredients in one bowl. So I have the bowl, I have my dry ingredients, so I'm going to do that first. Why are you taking so the, the first thing is two cups of flour. So I'm going to fill my flour level it, put it in, and we're gonna do that one more time. So you guys should be paying attention to this. I don't know why everyone's all over the place, but you guys should be, you can worry about your gloves later. Just watch for now. So two cups of flour, done. Now we need two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So this is our baking powder. Always make sure you know one's different than the other, okay? Baking powder, it'll stay right on the side. Baking powder. So we need two teaspoons and a half. So we do one level. The only thing you gotta watch is the, the baking um, powder does have lumps sometimes. And then we're gonna do so it's kinda like two. Sugar then. Yeah, kinda. Truthfully, we could do is like just sift all this, but I don't know if I'm gonna go through all that now. And then it's a half a teaspoon. So two and a half teaspoons and that's done. So now we got our baking powder. Now baking soda is only half a teaspoon. That's a lot of baking powder. I'm gonna put that in. And same thing, I gotta watch the lumps in here. I'm gonna try to break it up a little bit before I put it in. And there's our half teaspoon of baking soda. And the last thing is, which I didn't get, uh, 
I'll say that little salt there. Yep. Thank or you, Todd, you. thank you. You're See, there's one thing Chef K still forgot something. So the salt. Again, the salt you might want to measure somewhere else, not over top of the actual container, because if we go over, where's it all going to go? Got In our container. So this is pretty much half a teaspoon of the salt. And then all the dry ingredients are mixed together. So the dry is already done now, guys. We have all the dry done. So what I'm gonna do is push this to the side. And the next thing what I wanna do is actually mix all these dry ingredients together. You see though, they're kind of all in there. I'm just gonna use this pastry blender. So I don't know if you guys ever use this tool, but it's called a pastry blender. So a pastry blender is used to cut in fat into flour. We have our flour. So what do you think the next thing is gonna be? the fat or the butter so the butter is uh we need four ounces of butter all right you guys remember what the butter was Does it need to be how much four ounces truthfully with this one no it doesn't have to be melted it's half the butter well it's a, a stick of butter right or a half cup you might think about a half cup we were going over yesterday i did forget one more thing as i'm looking at this recipe did I bring up the sugar, guys? I don't think I had the sugar. I had the spoon for it, but I forgot to bring the sugar up. Two hands. Thank you. That's the last thing you want to spill. So the sugar is a tablespoon of sugar. All right. And that actually was the one thing I forgot to add to it. And again, we're going to combine it. And we'll put that here. And this is out of the way. And now we're back to our, our butter. So the butter is supposed to be cut into this flour by using this pastry blender. What I recommend is I got a whole stick of butter. Is it going to be hard to blend that in? No. Yeah, yeah kind of because it's a whole big stick. So what can I do? Melted. Who was somebody that came over here and helped me? And what did they bring me? Who was it? Kevin? Yeah. What did you bring me? Oh, I think it's hard. Cut the exactly so he brought this because he knew it'd be easier for me which I wasn't even prepared for that even though I wanted to do that but he helped me out I'm gonna cut this in some chunks all right before I add it because it's gonna be easier to blend that in all right Kevin very good move everything right? better with butter everything is better butter is flavor right mm -hmm. they say fat is flavor but I like butter flavor better okay Anyway, so now we have our butter in there, and all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to cut this in, is what this is used for. All right. So really, you're supposed to cut or press and turn it. And you just keep going around this whole mixture. And the butter should be blended in enough where it's like almost a pea size, like a small piece like this big. All right. And what I have to do is kind of go around and actually, and we have somebody else helping us with what's the other thing we have to do that we forgot to do. What was that sound, the beeping? Preheat the oven. Preheat the oven, right? So we have to preheat the oven and that's 400 degrees. Just check that guys, how it is on 400. Yep. So yeah. we're good. Hello. All right, again, I'm gonna go around here and break this butter or cut this the butter sanitizer. in. You also forgot to sanitize and, the table. Yeah, I know we did forget to do that, but right now we're just gonna concentrate and getting this. Actually, we should do it though, before we actually spread this out on the table, because I am gonna have to use the table. I'll do it. You wanna get a sanitizing bucket for me? All right, I'll so let's do this. Actually, I can do it real quick. I'll get the stuff. So sanitize your member guys, half of uh, bleach in about a uh, gallon or so of water, maybe a cap and a half. Don't get this on your pants or you'll have this. The pants will come white. That's from bleach. That's all dirty rags. Dirty, dirty ones. Just check. We got one in here. All right. Um, let me just get it quick, guys, because I want to get this going because we're on video and I don't want to sit here to 
mess around too much. So I'm just going to get this Sorry middle part. All right. So. Kind of just pause the video. Yeah, but I don't know how to get back once you pause it. I don't know. You get back to it. But anyway, so we're cutting in the flour or the butter into the flour. And if you look, see the, uh, it's, it's pretty uh, small now. If you look here, you can see it's not really big chunks anymore. It's almost like the size we want it. So we're good at this point. You might just want to make sure you get all the butter off of your pastry blender. Because the next step, guys, we're not going to use this pastry blender. Next thing is adding the liquid to it, all right? So um, when we're adding the liquid, we're actually going to do it by hand at that point. You could use a spoon too, but... It's easier to go by hand, so we should have our gloves on. Yeah, we may be able to actually eat this one today. So, anyway, um, the last step is basically, this recipe calls for um, milk, so three quarter cup of milk. I have my liquid measure. I'm gonna do buttermilk on here, all right? Cause uh, you know, you've heard of buttermilk biscuits, right? Yeah. So let's do buttermilk. The only thing I have to check the consistency and hopefully it's still fine. So three quarter cup. Remember eye level, so we're getting right to the point we need it. And then we're just gonna add that in. How many spoons going on? And then we're just gonna mix it with our hands. Oh, He's got music on his laptop. I didn't have music on my laptop. Your 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 just making me music. All right, so now I'm just incorporating the buttermilk in here and you'll see it'll start sticking to your fingers after this. The thing is you don't want to overmix this either, truth, you want to make it nice and just till it's combined. So you might have to work this a little bit to make sure, see how it's like still dry ingredients on the bottom? Yeah. You got to kind of sometimes press that in and get that worked into the dough. You might even have to, like I said, clean your hands off a little bit because this does stick to your hands. Are you going to use a, a cupcake to try to make the biscuits? Uh, yeah, I am going to use a cutter to do this, yep. And I do have that underneath my table. I did Are prepare you a cupcake, that. Cupcake thing or a cutter? Um, a cupcake pan cupcake, or cupcake, 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 and then cut them. Okay. All right. That's so you nice see, I did get most of that flour incorporated in. It just takes a little bit of work. I know a lot of times you guys want to give up and say, oh, it's too dry. It's not, but really, if you keep working on it and not quitting, you'll get this all combined. All right. So look at nice dough here. And that's pretty much our biscuit though. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to roll this out. You think of pizza. Yeah, it's kinda of like pizza. It's a we dough. Should, we should make that. So eat your share I'm gonna do is just dry this off a little bit. So we have a dry surface, because if it's not dry, what's gonna happen? It's gonna stick. It's gonna start sticking here. So actually with this, you still want to lightly dust this with some flour before you roll it out. So I'm just gonna bring this cup, all right? And I'm just gonna dust the table a little bit with some flour. Not the dusting at home, not the pledge and spraying, it's dusting with the flour. Putting it on, not yeah. putting it off, right? So I'm gonna just get this combined a little bit more. So dressing up the dough with this there. All right, and then Sometimes you might want to put a little extra where it is because it does soak that right up. Don't chefs do this when they're making pizza? Yeah, they do this with pizza also. The thing with this, guys, I find you guys want to do this. You have a dough and you want to just like roll it, roll it, roll it, and guess what? Next thing I know, it's rolled out like a pizza dough. <laughs> I'm really Think about it, a biscuit, we want it thick. So I actually could just press this out by hand and it'd be fine, but I'm just going to make it more uniform like this because it's nice and smooth. When you roll it, I'm just gonna do that. Man, so I'm really wishing we had cheese and sauce. I know. You can do like Tony was saying, we could shred some cheddar cheese up and actually mix mix that in and then you have a cheddar cheese biscuit. All right. So uh I like, like I said, we don't have any of that stuff. If only we had lobster. Oh 
So, we have a couple more things we need. Mise en place is our tray, because what are we going to do with the tray? You're going to put, put, put our, the dough on it. Right, we're going to put our dough on it. And we have our cutter. We have this fancy cutter that has a, the edges on it. So we're just going to cut this up, and we're going to put this on. Now, the secret, another thing I find you guys want to do this. Oh, I got my cutter. I'm just going to go right in the middle. What did I just do? Just I kind of like took the middle and I, you know, I like to go right to the edge as close as I can. I press down, I twist, I bring it out, and then I put it on. All right, I want to go right to the edge where I left off, so I'm not wasting a lot of that dough. Not saying I can't reuse this, we can take this and roll it back up. One more sounds good right now, like wow. a chocolate chip biscuit. Yeah, you could probably do that also, but. Again, we don't have chocolate Imagine chips. Imagine if we had chocolate chips up there. Yeah, we'd be doing a lot of stuff with Imagine chocolate chips. Imagine how cool would be if we had that stuff. So, I'm just going to start another row there. <clears throat> and here. So I'm trying to put brownie is cooking. It's coming from the oven. Yeah. I'm just so staggering them a little bit. These don't really, guys, they don't run out like a cookie would spread out this way. They're going to, should rise up. So really, I probably could actually space to three here. And they won't run together. So. I love I, I love KFC biscuits. Yeah, they're good. Our eight biscuits are good too. I don't eat food. All right, and we we let's see what we're getting out of this. It looks like we're going to get about eight maybe out of this, but we can re-roll it and probably get some more. Actually, I don't know if I get a full well, my one. And then all I want to do is combine these pieces that we didn't use. And we probably could get at least one or two more out of this. Just be aware that every time you mix this back up again, actually it's going to make them not as tender. The, the biscuits will be a little bit, you know, they're not going to be as tender and smooth and soft, tasty. They'll still probably taste the same, but all right. I'm not even going to bother with the rolling pin because I want to that kind of like keep one it. Big super biscuit. Yeah. And. You can get, you actually get two out of that. Yeah, you probably could roll this out and get another one. Or a bagel. All right. So, um, that's bagel. basically, yeah, we'll do a, no. like a bagel. It's like an onion ring. Bagel it's biscuit. Ring. We'll just boil it and then put it on there. No, it looks like an um, onion ring. Just put an onion in the middle of it. Yeah. So, um, that's basically what we'll do with the biscuits today, guys. So the recipe is very easy. You've seen uh, us mix, so you just need your dry measuring um, bowl and you need your uh, tray lad to this and everything else is pretty much out here so we'll work together and we'll get that uh another batch of this set up okay mm -hmm. all right